With so much happening in the world right now, a lot of stories are flying under the radar, even some fairly big ones. And so with that in mind, I wanted to talk about something that broke last week, but that's still deeply relevant when we look at the conduct of Donald Trump and so many of the people that support him in politics. And it has everything to do with the DOJ last week indicting somebody that they're calling a Russian spy and how this person at the very least indirectly made multiple efforts over more than half a decade to help elect Donald Trump and to help re-elect Donald Trump. How this Russian spy, at least an alleged one from the perspective of the U.S. federal government, bent over backwards to help Trump. It says here, Branson, 61, who is alleged to have tried to get Trump to attend the 2016 World Chess Championship, which was being held at New York's South Street Seaport, NBC News reported Thursday evening. Prosecutors said she emailed a Trump advisor on November 10, 2016, asking that Trump, then the president-elect, attend the event. The FBI said in the court filing that it publicly released photos from the event to show it was attended by Dmitry Peskov, who is now Putin's press secretary. There was no indication that Trump attended. Investigative reporter Scott Stedman reported for Forensic News that investigators are also keenly interested in the KSORS political activities, including rallying Trump supporters in 2020. This news website featured articles with titles such as Second Trump Term is Crucial to Prospect of Better U.S.-Russia Relations, Safer World, and Biden Victory Will Spell Disaster for U.S.-Russia Relations, warns billionaire, noted Stedman. The billionaire referenced by the outlet is Oleg Dar- Gary Pasca, a key figure in Trump's 2016 collusion with Russia. Soviet-born theologian Mikhail Morgulis, who died in November 2021, served on the board of KSORS between 2014 and 2018. He began a 2016 effort to rally Russian Americans for Donald Trump. It continued in 2020. And so what we're seeing is very clear. Donald Trump may never have had direct connections with this accused literal Russian spy. He may never have met with her. For example, he never went to this chess tournament. She wanted him to attend. Nonetheless, this was somebody who's being accused of the federal government of espionage trying to help Donald Trump, of running news websites spreading propaganda to make Trump look good and his opponent look bad. That is undeniable efforts from a Russian spy to help Donald Trump. And this is what I've talked about before. In many cases, it's not even necessary that Donald Trump have direct 100% clean cut ties to Russian spies, to the Russian government. It's simply enough for Donald Trump to know that Russia is helping him and he can look the other way. He can pretend it's not happening while still benefiting from it. And this is exactly one of those cases. And if you wanna see how this is playing out, look at how reluctant Trump has been to criticize Russia and to criticize the leader of that country. And look at a recent vote just yesterday in the House. It was 424 to eight. The vast majority of Congress voted en masse to revoke normal trading relations with Russia. And look at the eight people who voted against it. And look for three names you always see on Trump-related things. Boebert, Gates, Green. Other names there, of course. But those are three of the biggest Trump loyalists and three people who have been very reluctant to criticize Russia over the past few months and indeed years. Again, Donald Trump may not have directly colluded from this with this Russian spy, but what he did do is benefit from from it and certainly do nothing to stop it. Trump has been busted yet again, benefiting from Russian espionage.